Guys, I am literally making this video like 10 to 3, I think. I already brushed my teeth. I'm going to go right to bed after this. Um, the Ahmad Armory, whatever the hell his name is, shooting back in February. They made the arrest recently. With all the quarantine and COVID, all the bullshit going on. I didn't hear about it two days ago. Now, I'm seeing really hardcore right-wing guys, you know, second-wing guys, cool guys. That were flat out calling this a cobra to murder of an innocent guy. And I'm glad I always wait a while to make my videos because more shit has unfolded. You go into Candace Owens on Facebook and she gives a video. Also, a girl I know posted something about him, a link to a video. And I watched that. The narrative is that. Ahmad Armory, I, I can't pronounce his name, please forgive me, was jogging in a neighborhood and he fit the description of someone that might have been involved in a burglary. So a father and son, white guys obviously, got in the truck, drove after him, cut him off, jumped out of the truck, son had the shotgun, father had the pistol, confronted him and killed him and they claimed self-defense. And he's a good boy, he's sweet and innocent, you know, another you know, hunting black for fun, you know what I mean. Well, there were some recent developments. First and foremost, he was not exactly innocent. There's video footage of him deliberately walking onto a private property that is under construction. I didn't see the whole video, I saw a clip of it, but he's walking out to someone's property without their permission. And every once in a while you get a young guy walking up. Um, are you guys hiring laborers? Are you guys hiring apprentice electricians? But the video gives the impression he's snooping around. Unnecessarily, if not flat out committing a crime. Now, trespass means you went where you didn't belong. Burglary means you went where you didn't belong. With the intent to commit another crime on top of that. So, he's most likely involved in going onto the property without permission, snooping around, and that's most likely what turned him on to these two men. He also was on probation for five years because when he was in high school, he had a gun in school. And I heard another story that he was trespassing in a school with a gun and ran away and the gun fell out of his pants as police were chasing him. Now that entire story may not be true. Things are still in the mix. But he was on felony probation for five years for possession of a gun on a school grounds. At like 18 years old or 19 years old or some shit like that. And he, while on probation for, while on parole for, while on probation for that, crime, he was caught shoplifting. Now, when you are on pro probation, especially for a felony, you don't get busted for the crime. You get busted for the probation violation. When I was in school, we went to the courthouse in White Plains, the county courthouse, to watch the judge do a um, uh, violation of probation proceedings. And a gentleman was, who was a year older than me at the time, was charged with uh, Attempted assault, which basically means he was threatening somebody. But he was on probation for felony burglary. And the judge said, you have two choices. Plead not guilty and demand the jury. And possibly get seven years in prison. Or fess up right now and I'll give you a year in jail. He took the way out and left. So you could be shoplifting a fucking candy bar. And get like 10 years in prison. Because you violated your probation. And when you violate your probation. The judge. Takes the probation sentence. And throws it out. And replaces it with a jail sentence. Because when you're sentenced for the first crime. The judge says there's two sentences. Probation and prison. The prison sentence is going to go away. And I'm going to put in the probation sentence. If you screw up. I'm going to take out the probation sentence. And put in the prison sentence in its place. Mm. So he should have actually been in prison And he, he did have an extensive criminal record there's, there's more charges that are out there somewhere But right now he was caught on surveillance cameras on a property 
and he was a convicted felon for having a gun on school grounds, five years probation, and he was charged with shelving while on probation. Now, here's where the men went wrong, and the men are not going to the men are not going away with this. Working for a police department, they tell you when you're off duty, you be a good witness, okay? Having been on the street and having seen things to call in, there was one incident where I had two guys tuned up on drugs. They were on meth. meth. They weren't dangerous, they were just fucking crazy, like dopey. I called back up, took the picture. A while later, I got a unit and a SWAT officer, because they also the medical SWAT officer. I showed them the picture on my phone. They went after the guys. Cop came by later, Irish guy Danny. He said they got one guy looking for the other guy still. We didn't want to hurt him. We didn't want to put him in jail. We want to put him on probation or rehab or some shit. A drug douche, okay? You need to learn to simply call for the police to help you and hit the pic take the picture with your phone. You could literally have one guy talking on the phone, one guy taking a picture. Describe the suspect, and when the cop comes, show him the picture. Okay? Now, if it's just a guy who might have been snooping around, the cop will take the picture, put it on their official website, Facebook, Instagram. Have you seen this person suspected for possible trespassing? If it's a real serious crime, like rape or some shit, they'll go hunting for the guy all day and night. Okay? The only time you get involved personally is when you see the guy trying to rape or kill somebody. That is the only time you get involved personally. All the times you just call 911 and be a good witness. Now the father was a district a, a, a attorney detective. Now the DA's office does not have a police department. They sometimes will borrow detectives. You'll have, you have a prosecutor and they'll borrow a detective from the police department to be their detective in their office. Or they'll hire a retired detective to work for their office. The father was a sheriff's deputy who had come out of retirement to be a, prosecu uh, a prosecutor's investigator. Okay, He was a lawman, retired. Now, a retired lawman is what? A civilian. Okay, a retired lawman is a civilian. And his job is to observe and report. So what the father should have done is told the son, we're going to call it in, we're going to take pictures, we're going to do surveillance, and when the unit comes, we're going to give it to them. But what they did do, they got in the truck and pursued him on their own. Now, if a police officer in his uniform, in his car, with his siren on, had chased him down, pulled over and said, I am a police officer, you are under arrest. And a fight broke out. That would be justified. But a civilian. Or in this case two civilians. Going after someone. Is not going to be justified. Now. The Texas church shooting. The guy was in his house. He heard gunshots. Grabbed the AR-15. Ran outside. Saw the shooter. Coming out of the church. After killing people. Engaged him. Shot him. Got in a truck with another guy. Chased after him. That was justified because that guy was a mass murderer. And it was presumed that he would go and kill other people in the next couple of minutes. So if you are pursuing someone after witnessing with your own eyes a mass murder, that's going to be justified. But if you suspect someone of burglary and there's no rape, there's no murder, there's no shooting... Okay, you just suspect someone of burglary, you as a civilian going after them, is going to be considered vigilante justice. His criminal record aside, at that exact moment, he was a suspect in a non-violent trespassing. And two civilians went after him. Okay, now, if they had seen him with their own eyes, punching a lady in the face, different story. If they had seen him with a butcher knife running after an eight-year-old girl, different story. 
But because they cannot illustrate that they saw him with their eyes committing a violent felony, they are not justified. They are not. The Tennessee versus Garner Supreme Court case in 1985 said you may legally shoot a fleeing felon in the back as they are retreating if two qualifications are met. First and foremost, you must witness a violent felony with your eyes. Not I saw something or someone told me that, you know, if I could walk around the corner and I could see a woman laying on the ground naked holding her head. And there could be a guy with his dick hanging out of his pants right next to her. And she can say, this man raped me. I did not see it with my eyes. So when I pull out my gun and run after him and shoot him in the back, I am going to prison. Okay? You must see it with your own eyes. Not I heard this. Not I saw this. Not I suspected. You must see it with your own eyes. And you have to honestly believe this person is so dangerous. And I have to kill them to stop them. That's how dangerous they are. Okay? They could not illustrate that. They could illustrate they thought he might have been a criminal. They now have his criminal record to fall back on. But they could not illustrate at that exact moment. I, we went after him. He was committing some, some kind of violent felony. He was going to kill somebody. They can't illustrate that. Okay? And civilians actively pursuing a suspect in any other circumstance is going to be a problem. Okay? They just they don't want you doing it. Okay? There are many state laws, some federal laws, that will say flat out they don't want civilians chasing. And if it's a mass murderer, like in Texas, the Texas church, they'll make an exception to overlook it. Okay? They understand mass murderers, they understand terrorists, okay? But in non-violent, suspecting things, they do not want civilians chasing people, okay? Stand your ground means you defend yourself where you are right now. So when the tax me here, I defend myself. Castle doctor means I defend myself on my property, my house, my store, okay? I defend myself on my property, okay? Getting in a truck, and going after somebody in the street while you're a civilian is not castle doctrine. It's not standing ground law. It's vigilante justice. So they're going to get nailed with vigilante justice. They may plead on the manslaughter. They may get 10 years, but it's going to be something. They're not going to get off scot-free. I mean, unless you see, show, unless they have a video of the guy Five minutes earlier, stabbing a child. They're not going to do it. Trust me. And a whole bunch of celebrities are showing how they care. Now, I love Simone Biles, okay? I love her. She's great. Greatest gymnast of all time. My favorite gymnast loves her, okay? Simone posted, you know, memorial of him, memories of him. She wasn't a race player about it, but she was posting that it's a concern, you know, why they got to kill this guy, blah, 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 blah. Simone's brother... Is on trial for triple murder. Simone Biles' brother was at a party. It was an incident. It was a fight. And Simone Biles' brother, somewhere in that fight, shot five people. Woman in the arm lived. Guy in the head lived. Three other guys died. So Simone Biles' brother shot five guys. Three of them died. Young guys, too. 19, 20, 21. Okay, young guys. Did anybody say Simone Biles but as a racist? No. Just an hour ago, I was reading a story about a, a black man who murdered an elderly couple and was shot dead by the police. Did anybody say him murdering the elderly couple was racist? Okay. You could show me 5,000 cases where a black guy kills a white guy and no one says racist. Okay. Maybe it was racist. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it was just them being dumbasses. Okay. But you really got to understand that you can't always say it's automatically racist. Okay? Because black guys are killed by black guys a million times more than the white guys. Okay? So, unless you wanted to say it's racist when a black guy kills a black guy, or unless you wanted to say it's racist when a black guy kills a white guy, don't say racist automatically. Don't. 
Okay. And I'm going to upload this on Instagram <laughs> and YouTube. Probably later on when I wake up. We only go right to bed right now. I'm so fucking tired. Okay. Um, thank you.